Hi everyone. Welcome to Rose Hypnitz podcast episode 36. My name is Hannah and I am recording this knitting, dyeing, spinning, crafty sort of podcast from the northern part of Tasmania in Australia. I am on internet on on Ravelry as Rose Hip Chick and the same for Instagram. You can find me there as Rose Hip Chick. Um, there is a blog where I post these episodes and that is um, Rose Hip Knits Podcast or blogspot.com. And um, you can find a group for this podcast in Ravelry and just search for Rose Hip Knits Podcast in Ravelry and um, you'll be able to find it. And please join us there if you um, want to take part in any of the discussions uh, after each episode and when we do um, different um, knit alongs and things that will happen in the Ravelry group. Um, so welcome, my name is Hannah, did I say that? Uh, today we are back in my studio, it's Friday afternoon and um, I have a couple of more hours. I have a couple more hours before my uh, family returns back from work and school. I have had today off, which is rare for me on a Friday, and I have had a day without children, and I have been able to do a few things around the house and with my um, sewing and dyeing and knitting and things like that. So I've had a great day. It was pouring with rain just before, but now the sun is coming out. And um, before, because it's quite late in the day, well, for winter anyway, um, the sun is quite low, and I'm hoping that the sun coming in here to the studio is not sort of giving weird light for you there when I'm recording. Anyway, I wasn't going to record today, and... Um, almost a whole day passed and then I thought oh let's just um, sit down for just a short while and and have a bit of a talk so I have my cup of tea and I have a few things here to talk about and um, yes let's do this episode let's catch up so thank you to all of you for watching new and returning Thank you for everyone who's been in contact with me and who participated in any of the discussions in the Ravelry group or put a comment on the YouTube video from last time I recorded. Thank you everyone. So today I do not have lots and lots to talk about. I probably could talk for a while. I always can when it comes to the knitting and, and hand dyeing and things like that. but. I didn't take a lot of time to prepare today because I just wanted to um, make this nice and casual and just sit down and, and talk to you for a little while. The main reason really that I felt that I, I really wanted to talk to you was because I finished uh, two of the um, things that I have been working on last night and I sewed in the end today on one of them so I just really wanted to share that with you. And then I did a little bit of dyeing. I've been doing quite a bit of dyeing yesterday and today when I had the two days at home on my own. But yes, um, let's um, talk about some knitting. So I think I'll, I'll show the, the smaller project first, the smaller item. And that's my socks. So these are just um, just they these are just vanilla socks um, that I started knitting when I was in Sweden in May using a self patterning yarn that I bought in Sweden and using a contrasting of the same brand for the heels and toes and cuff and I always put all of the details for everything I work on on Ravelry. So if you ever want information about anything I talk about, please have a look on my project pages in Ravelry. 
So I'm, I'm Rose Hip Chick there and you can easily find me. And please friend me if, if you like. I always friend people back. And uh, I love following what everyone's working on. So yes, these are the socks that I finished. I am... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of happy with them. I'm not... They're not the best socks I have ever knit. I talked last time about that I I started on one type of needle, moved to another one and then another one. So I've used short DPNs, I've used a 9 inch circular, I've used a um, bamboo circular needle and did magic loop. I did, uh, used a metal circular needle with magic loop and then the end I used my carbons DPNs and I used a two millimeter needle and uh, it's a very thin um, yarn and even though I used a two millimeter needle which normally gives me quite a tight gauge these are still very loose in the gauge and they're like see-through they're yes not nice and tight in the fabric that was created but these will be just nice socks for using at home it'd be interesting to see what the wear is like um, I sort of matched the, the blue yarn so that, that that will be the same and then for the the pinky ready one I just used whatever was the next coming up in the ball but that's them and I think in total I only used 50 grams but I do think it is quite a thin yarn so it has a lot of um, meterage but that's them and I'm, I'm happy to have them off the needles I have been working a little bit more on my on my simple Skype socks or skip socks people call them different things and different podcasts I've discovered but I have um, worked a little bit on them I showed them last time I won't show them this time because I did not uh, need many rows on them but I'm again I'm happy now that they are the the main socks that I'll be working on because I do really want to um, finish them too but then the main thing that I finished and that I really love and I'm so so happy with is my veranda shawl and I'm not sure how I'm going to show this in its entirety to you because this is huge this shawl um, is the veranda shawl by Meg Gadsby an Australian designer and um, in her pattern and this is a test knit that I, need, I did in her pattern she used white gum wool um, four ply the fingering weight and that's the same base that I use for my um, Tasmanian ethical fingering weight um, wool okay, that's, that's the base that I use so I decided to dye up a couple of skeins to use for these two color shawl and yes the light is a bit funny in here today but I, I hope you can see it well enough that's my thunderstorm colorway which is a grey, soft grey and I decided I wanted to start with this nice and soft grey and then there's a slip stitch section and I started to incorporate um, a pink and purple colourway that I call Party Girl and I thought they went really really really, really well together I really liked the softness of the grey and then putting in these pops of colour and then finishing off with a party girl and just going crazy and colourful and happy. And yes, the shawl used 
almost all of both of the skeins. So I had one gram left of the gray and three grams left of this pink purple one. So yes, it's, I haven't blocked this yet. It's two meter, the wingspan is about two meters at the moment. And the depth of it, of it is 85 centimeters. So that's before blocking. And I am a very loose knitter and I normally go down like one millimeter in needle size for anything I, I need. I did not do it for this shawl. I used the four millimeter needle that Meg suggested in the pattern. So I think that my gauge is much looser and I did have to modify a little bit when I started the different sections just because I was running out of my yarn because I was I did not have the correct gauge. But it's it's a pattern that's just really simple to just you know stop wherever you you need to to start um the next colour or when you run out of the colour. It's it's just really easy to just um start a slip slip stitch section or the garter uh, rich section wherever you need to. So yes, it's um, huge, nice, big and squishy um, and I I love it. I'm going to take some, some better photos of me wearing it. Um, maybe after I, I wash it and block it, but I just, it's so soft, it's so nice, it's lovely. I um, I can wear it like this, it's like a, it's wearing like a blanket almost. Oh, it's so nice. Yes, I am, I'm happy that the colors worked out. I'm happy that I was able to do exactly what I wanted with the colors. Um, and yes, I just, it doesn't go to, <laughs> looks a bit funny when I'm wearing my Multnomah. Um, but yes, basically I love it and I'm so happy that it's off the needles. And um, It didn't take an enormous amount of time to knit it because it's it's garter stitch and it's um, you know, it grows when you sit and knit on it in front of the TV and just a little bit every now and then. Um, you know, you might as well knit on this as the sit and knit on a pair of socks when you just need a little bit of simple knitting to do. So while I really like these colours, I haven't. Um, I have been thinking a lot about other color combinations that would be really really nice and I have a few in the shop um, and I didn't I didn't mention that in the beginning but I do have an Etsy shop where I sell hand dyed yarns and some handmade product bags uh, it's Rose Hip Island on Etsy and uh, yes I have been looking at some of the skeins that I have there of the Tasmanian ethical merino in the four ply fingering weight and um, I have been thinking I have I've dyed up some more of the um, thunderstorm because I just think that's such a nice color to um, mix with something else and I went for quite a crazy skein but I also I've been looking at some of my green colorways I have one called lake and I think that will just be really nice with the thunderstorm and the hydrangea that I have, which is um, like the, the lighter pinks in here. So they would um, be colorways with depth in them, but they would not come out this variegated. But I, I love it in this. I, um, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. But yes, I have been thinking about other colour combinations and who knows, maybe I'll make another veranda shawl one day, but I do have plenty of other things 
um, happening at the moment. But um, yes, you should um, check out all of Meg's design. She has some beautiful shawls, and the veranda shawl is still not published. But I'll let you know when when that's ready. So yes, that knitting has been taking quite um, some of my time, and then. I started on a test knit, but that's a secret, so I can't show you. Oh, I have it in here and I'll just show you. This is a bag that my mum made for me out of an old tea towel. And she put this embroidered thing, little patch on there. So yes, this is um, where my test knit is and I'll, I can show you what I'm using uh, to knit it with. I'm using a skein of hand dyed, um, it's a worsted Aran weight, um, and it's a green and purple colorway. This is a, a superwash, 100% Australian wool. And I am using that together with this Yo Sharp Silk Road Aran Tweed. I think this is the, yes, it's the colorway Imagine. And I thought these two, these two go quite well together. They're quite a fun mix. And with this um, pattern that I'm knitting up, um, it look, it's looking quite fun. And I'm doing something for my youngest daughter. And uh, you'll be able to see that quite soon. I have about a month to, to knit this. And um, once it's published and it's not secret anymore, I'll, I'll show you. But that's it, I think. And with those two finished things that I have this week, I have about 1,000 metre ready for stash dash. And with Stash, Stash Dash and um, all the other cows that are happening at the moment, there's a lot of um, just finishing things, um, a lot of shawl knit alongs, sock knit alongs, just finish all the things knit alongs. And of course Stash Dash, which it seems like a lot of people are participating in, and even if a lot of people do not post things at the end in the Knit Girls group, in the actual official stash dash threads. A lot of um, us knitters seem to have that um, as something that's pushing us at the moment, just to, to finish things that we've had on our needles for a long time and just anything that we're working on at the moment. And I have been thinking about that we should do a, a new knit along because I have received um, donations of prices and of course I like to, to get them out to you. They're not doing any good sitting here with me. But since we have all these um, niche longs happening in the different Ravelry groups for different podcasts, I thought we'll do a sort of double dip um, niche long this time. So I thought we'll do a double dip dash cow, a DDD cow maybe. And basically I'll create a finished thread for spinning and one finished thread for knitting and crocheting. And anything that you finish for stash dash or anything that you finish, you know, within that time period that Stash Dash is on, and I'll I'll put dates and information like that in the thread, and I'll create a shatter thread as well. But anything you finish, enter them in the spinning or the knitting and crochet thread, and it just is another way of putting an entry into in a price, I guess. Because realistically, uh, to win anything at Stash Dash would be um, 
quite hard or unlikely. It's there's so many people that are participating. So doing this is a way to increase your chances to actually win something for all of those amazing things that you are uh, creating and finishing. And I know that that I I do that. I I often find more than one or even two knit alongs that I can enter my finished things into and then you have all that work that you've put into it you actually um, have a few different um, places where you could win something and I don't know did, did the light just totally change just then because the Sun disappeared outside <laughs> it looks totally different Yes, so that was probably a very weird explanation of what I'm, I'm trying to do with Anita Long. Um, but basically, we'll just copy the stash dash and I'll create two threads where you can enter the same things and just other things to win. So um, I'll do a spinning thread and a knitting and crochet thread separate because I do have a braid of fibre that um, I showed you a few episodes back. I'll show it again next time. So I have a braid of fibre that was sent to me by a viewer. That will be the price for the spinning thread. And then I've had some pattern donations and I'll, I'll, I'll show that next time as well because I wasn't prepared today enough to have that ready. And also, if there's anyone out there who'd like to um, put something in for a prize for our little double dip dash, just um, contact me and um, that would just make it extra fun if we had something more. So um, do that if you have the ability to, to do that. But that's that. So check out the Ravelry group and come and join us in the Ravelry group if you haven't done so already. Okay, well, I have been doing some dyeing and the, I was trying to get a bit warm again in the dyeing um, world <laughs> after being away for a while and I just started doing some single skeins and experimenting a little bit um, and some of those experiments I have turned into minis. So the build, there will be some more minis coming up in, in my shop eventually. I'm just sort of working on getting a few different colours ready. But the main thing that I, I did do, that I thought I'd show you, was my entry for the Dyer's Notebook Die Along, which started on the 1st of June. And this is um, a Die Along held in the Dyer's Notebook podcast Ravelry group and between 1st of June and end of July I think we will dye at least 100 grams of fibre and then knit something with it or crochet I think and um, it's it's a um, a fantasy and fairy tale theme so anything um, you can use inspiration from any sort of fantasy or fairy tale um, fairy tale and um, dye something up and then any that so I am um, I did that and what I um, got my inspiration from was uh, Ronya, the robber's daughter, which is an Astrid Lindgren book. But they recently, uh, it, it was recently made into a anime, a Japanese anime, and that was showing on TV when I was in Sweden in May, and I watched that with my daughter, and I thought that was a, quite a fun thing to base my colorway on. So that's what I did, and I'll. I'll I'll show a photo somewhere around here of what my inspiration was. And these are the skeins that I dyed up. And these are so bright and they're 
blue and green I find really really hard to get the correct color of in photos I really struggle and it's quite hard when you list things on Etsy when you can't capture the true color um, I'm trying really hard I'm, I'm taking photos in different settings different light and everything and I'm hoping that I can get the correct color through anyway I did one skein of my fingering superwash in the largest skein the 112 gram skein of Australian superwash merino and then this is a new base which is a wool bamboo silk sock yarn so I did them together because I always uh, like to use different bases and just in the same dye bath and see if I get any big differences. I was actually surprised with this base that it took the color really well and they look quite similar except for that um, the plying of them looks a bit different. This is more where you can see the difference in the base so this is a turquoisey green colorway with speckles of red and purple and I really really like it and I'm going to use the superwash merino to knit a shawl and I'm hoping to knit is the veggie garden shawl by Clothesline Design, and which I am going to test knit. So I'm hoping this will work for that. So that got me a bit warm in the clothes again to the dyeing, and um, then I have continued on and done quite a bit more, and I've been going a little bit crazy buying in some more bases. So I've, I just had a big box down here it is a big box arrived today with more of the white gum wool and uh, so I am going to get dying with that and um, I got some more of the wool bamboo silk base and a few other things so I'll have plenty of bases to play around with I had some bags cut out before I went to Sweden and they've just been waiting for me to sew them up so I did that today I just need to do some top stitching and then they'll be ready to list in the shop and um, yes I think sorry for turning around I think that's um, what's been going on here um, I just really wanted to to show you my things that I have finished and what I have been working on and um, let's catch up a little bit oh and I, I wanted to mention too I know that I said last time that and I, I'll, I'll be starting working on a contract I have some more work I'm not sure what will happen with the podcast and how much time I'll have and everything like that I never meant it as a way of saying that I'm 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 stopping to do this um, I'm not I'm just trying to be really aware of what my limits are because I see podcasts that are stopping and closing down everywhere and I seem to see this trend trend that people or podcasters they try to sort of lift the game and be more professional put more time into the podcast be bigger and greater and then that's just not working that's not sort of solving the problem that they have or they're not a problem but it's it's not getting them what they want and then they just stop and um, no I, I just I just want to keep this as a, a casual catch-up and just some time for me to sit down and talk about my knitting and um, I know to interact with you and 
that's what I want. So I, I'll just keep this at the level that I have and I, yes. And I, there seems to be a few of you that, that enjoy it, which I really appreciate. And um, yes, let's just try to keep it to this and do what we're doing and have fun. Okay, everyone, uh, I have to go and um, post some things at the post office and get some food for dinner before I have hungry children that return home. So I'll see you all next time. And please come and see me at all those places online um, that I've told you about. So take care. Bye.